the country has been receiving over the past few months. My guest this week is Serin Modjuf, National Disaster Management Agency Coordinator in the West Coast region. He's going to talk to us about the impact of the disaster in this region and around the country. You are the coordinator of the National Disaster Management Agency here in the West Coast region. How do you feel like working for the NDMA at a time when there are so many requests you know, around the country and around the region about people complaining of their houses uh, you know, falling, maybe their roofs are also leaking as a result of the flood? I mean, uh, is it good, a good time to say that you are you know, working for the NDMA knowing that these requests are so many and you may not take care of all of them? Thank you very much, Ibrahima, for, for that wonderful question. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's um, something that I really appreciate. I'm looking at my background um, as somebody who had worked for humanitarian organization for a while. Um, remember, prior to me coming to the NDMA as a staff, I had worked with the Gambia Red Cross for a duration of eight years, um, whose work almost are very similar. So actually having picked up this job, um, to me, is not something strange. Um, I already have that mentality in me, and uh, it's something that I enjoy doing. So actually, um, it's, it's, it's quite challenging, uh, but I love challenges, because it is there and then that you can actually prove um, who you are, what, you, what your capabilities are, and so on and so forth. So um, yes, there is a lot of pressure. Calls are coming day in, day out. Uh, but with my experience and my expertise, I have every confidence that um, any situation that comes my way, the capacity is there for, for me to cope with. Well, as we speak, it is raining and uh, there is no sign that it is going to stop anytime soon. Uh, according to the weather forecast, it's going to rain until the 15th of this month or even beyond. Now, I mean, what preparations or what you know, I mean, measures are you or is your institution putting in place at least to, you know, help um, sensitize the people as regard, you know, these floods and how, you know, they can at least, um, you know, guard themselves against, you know, uh, their houses falling when uh, they know that rains are going to come, you know, this month and beyond. Yeah, I mean, that is, uh, we need to be more prepared. Um, having once every, as a human being, once an information is given, it is the responsibility of you, the receiver, to conceive the information and use the information to better plan for yourself. Thus, the whole idea of information dissemination is all about that. Get people informed. Once they are informed, let them make informed choices based on the decision you give. This is, this is a call for everyone, be it a landlord, be it a government department, be it a local NGO, be it an NGO, or even the local authorities. Once the information is there, it, c it can only be useful if it is utilized. Okay, and once it is utilized, of course the outcome would always be on our side. The fact of the matter is how many of us do receive information and downplay the information. This is why, and if, if such a thing happened, the, the obvious result would be we will always be, be overcome by events. And our role as a coordination unit um, 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 under, under the office of the vice president is to make sure that whatever information comes to us, we disseminate it to the appropriate channels. It is now the responsibility of those channels to use that information, interpret it for their own consumption. But the problem that we're currently facing is information are delivered on time to the right people at the right channels, but those informations are not well utilized. So at the end of the day, when problems em emerge, they start running to us. And you know, it's, it's when they come to us, we cannot, we cannot send them away. Because somebody who needs, who is suffering, is a right. It's his in the humanitarian fundamental right for him or her to be assisted. So this is why Comward may yet will continue the sensitization, will continue the collaboration, but it would not also stop us from trying to come to their aid whoever comes a victim. Well, Nay, mm -hmm. this September will go down in history as one of the months which we experience more rain mm -hmm. uh, than any other month. If you, uh, so far, mm -hmm. uh, since the first of, this of the month, it's been, it's, it's has, it has been raining every day. Non-stop. Now, how, how has this affected life in 
the camera. Where, where you live? Well, Mo, I think the rains have affected life in all areas. But talking about Brikama, it has caused uh, it has caused huge destruction. I think the destruction pattern varies from compound to compound, maybe de de uh, dependent on slope and other factors. But it has indeed caused huge uh, destructions in other parts of Brikama. Mm -hmm. How about where you live? Well, uh, where I live, I've not heard of much uh, destruction, mm -hmm. uh, given the terrain of the area where I live around Weringara, that part of. Uh, West Coast region. Mm -hmm. uh, these are not low-lying areas, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So most of the rains that come usually go straight uh, to the low-lying areas, and so it has not had it, uh, a terrible impact uh, on on people's uh, homes. But it has somehow affected life, the movement of people, because people are not used to mm -hmm. uh, rain every day. Rain every day. Rain. Yeah. So the women going to the market, those going to work. Mm -hmm. You know. So everybody you is actually the have to carry an umbrella, umbrella basically every day and yeah. everywhere you go. Yeah, and even now some people just walk into the rains. They've realized that now the rains are part and parcel of our life. And amazingly, people are saying, you know what, it's not August anymore. Yeah. This is September yeah. and still non-stop rain. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know what the forecast would tell us, but it seems looking at the skies, <laughs> we'll be ex uh, expecting rain <laughs> throughout. Okay. We now go for a break. You can expect on returns right after. Welcome back to Weekend Spectrum. Osama bin Laden is dead, but the circumstances leading to his killing are far from over. In fact, one of those who took part in the covert operation that led to the death of the fugitive Al-Qaeda leader has published a book detailing the way America's most wanted terrorist was killed. CNN's Barbara Starr explains. Appearing in this CBS 60 Minutes excerpt in disguise and under his fake name, Mark Owen, this is actually Matt Bizanet the former Navy SEAL who wrote the book, No Easy Day, a first-hand account of being on the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. My worry from the beginning is, you know, it's a political season. This book is not political whatsoever. It doesn't, doesn't badmouth either party. Is there classified information in the book? Maybe. Military officials tell CNN photos like this one of advanced night vision goggles that SEALs use worry them. Bizonet's account of the secret mission has new details. He says as the team went up the stairs of the compound, Bin Laden poked his head out. Bizonet heard other SEALs fire two shots. Bin Laden then disappeared back into the room. By the time Bizonet got inside, Bin Laden was on the floor, not standing up as was first reported. Bizonet and another SEAL then fired into bin Laden's chest to ensure he was dead. CNN's Carol Costello spoke to Peter Bergen. People's recollections of these events are not perfect. The White House still addressing skeptics. As more debriefings happened, debriefings of the special operators involved in the mission as well as others, uh, some of the initial information turned out to be incomplete. We acknowledged that at the time. The Defense Department is now expected to inform the Senate that he has violated secrecy agreements and that both he and his publisher could be forced to forego royalties. Barbara Starr, CNN, the Pentagon. Well, that's the weekend spectrum this week. Thanks for watching. Join us next weekend for a brand new edition of the program. I am Mohamed Diallo. And I am Beku Madema.